Thank you for this um, fantastic emotional presentation. And um, I have been to many centers, including some of them in Russia and some of them international. But what I can say is uh, that uh, Russian surgeons are not inferior to uh, international surgeons. However, we always keep forgetting about the biology of the tumor when assessing uh, efficiency. When we conducted a similar analysis in uh, Novosibirsk, when we had recurrence after uh, trachelectomy, um, we looked for metastasis and uh, certain uh, several patients uh, showed that uh, lymphatic nodes did have metastases. I have specialized in uh, lymphatic nodes for um, a large period of time. And I would like to ask the question to Professor Berliff. I would like to ask um, a question to uh, Professor Shevchuk and to Professor Kohler. How many lymph nodes are removed in uh, uh, during radical hysterectomy? And when we were introducing endoscopy, laparoscopy, uh, are we removing more lymph nodes than we used to do um, when uh, uh, when applying the laparotomic approach. So this is the question that I would like to ask you, our leading experts. Talking about uh, lymph dissection, lymph node dissection, the quantity is not an objective criterion of how radical the surgery is. There may be studies that indicate individual features of uh, um, limb drainage in limb drainage or uh, in um, cervical cancer patients. This is a very uh, individualized individualized uh, anatomical feature. But if I have to build on my results obtained in the course of, uh, obtained in our experience of radical hysterectomy, we normally remove around 18 lymph nodes and sometimes or at least today, we are very critical in our discussion of uh, uh, laparoscopy and its safety. However, laparoscopy has introduced a lot of positive um, developments in oncosurgery. First of all, laparoscopy enables you to have perfect visual control and a very objective um, view of the situation. If you look back, our oncology congresses used to discuss findings, we used to discuss outcomes, uh, but we were unable to discuss the technicalities and the fine points of the surgery. And now the technology enables us to do that. It enables us to compare the differences in our methodology, in our techniques. So this, uh, the number of lymph nodes is an important criterion, but um, it, uh, it fails to capture many important sides of the problem. At present, we are uh, studying the role and significance of the lymph nodes because uh, they have some features that require further study. Another question that uh, we have been considering for a long time is this, the number of lymph nodes that you remove during lymphadenectomy within limits, of course, is determined by how busy your pathologist is and how uh, long their working day is. So this is the only limiting factor. Thank you. 
and, and mentioned that it is not the lum number of lymph nodes that's important. It is whether you determine whether there is metastases in the lymph node. So it doesn't matter if you recover 30 lymph nodes, 50 lymph nodes, 100 lymph nodes. If that patient has metastases and you haven't detected it, that's a problem. So I think that that's why the importance of sentinel lymph node mapping in that it's been shown actually in endometrial cancer that if you do sentinel lymph node mapping, you are more likely to find metastases than if you don't do sentinel lymph node mapping. In other words, if you do the standard processing for lymph nodes, you have a lower likelihood of finding metastases than if you did sentinel lymph node mapping. So I think that many institutions have gone away from doing a lymphadenectomy, but actually doing just the sentinel lymph node mapping. And on another note, I think it's also, as uh, Alexei mentioned, is the way the pathologist process the lymph nodes. Often the pathologist, when we used to go to congresses and everybody would say, well, I removed 25 in my institution and I removed 40 in my institution, the pathologist would tell us, how many lymph nodes do you want? And I'll give you that number of lymph nodes. So we actually, we, we did a study in conjunction with the University of North Carolina, where the processing of the lymph nodes is different than the processing of the lymph nodes at MD Anderson. And typically, in their processing, they get a lot more lymph nodes. So for radical hysterectomies, when we used to do lymphadenectomies, we no longer do lymphadenectomies for radical hysterectomies. But when we used to do lymphadenectomies, the University of North Carolina had twice the number of lymph nodes that MD Anderson had, but the rate of positive lymph nodes was exactly the same. So what matters is that you find the metastatic disease rather than the number of lymph nodes. I think there's nothing to add to, to, to Peto. The number, the absolute number is not, not the, the indicator. Maybe I give only two commands to, to, to the entire discussion. I think it's, it is up to the patient, especially for fertility, if we don't know if a simple trahalectomy is better than a radical and the approach is not clear. And in my opinion, immediately after the leg trial, all kinds of laparoscopic or robotic trachelectomy had to be forbidden because it's the same procedure when with a manipulator, even in young patients who wants to get uh, pregnant in the future, but this is only a side command. Uh, so so this, is, this is, we have to inform the patient, especially in these many, many problems where we don't have any discussion. And, and this is the only point where I don't agree with you, Pedro. The patient is a patient that makes a decision. We are not, we can only give that data, we can show different data from the randomized trial, from our own, from others, but the final decision, what's going on with herself, is by the patient. I want to comment on that. I think, I agree with Pedro, I think we have to inform the patient, but the patient cannot take the decision. I mean, we are the doctors, we are the scientists, we are educated to interpret studies, to show really the benefit or the disadvantage, and we cannot, and that's why we studied, that's why we are here, and, and, and that, we, that responsibility we cannot give to the patient. But we have to inform the patient, but we cannot ask the patient to take a decision.